Well, Facebook says it's entering the cryptocurrency market. Earlier today, the company announced a new digital currency called Libra, and it'll be used on, on a blockchain-based system called Calibra. Well, the company plans to launch in 2020, and it will have its own app as well as an avail be available on Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Facebook hopes as a system will allow users to send money as easily as a text message and at, quote, low to no cost. Well, joining me now is Nicholas Thompson. He's a CBS News contributor and editor-in-chief of Wired Magazine. So, Nick, I'm just curious, what makes Facebook's Libra so different from other cryptocurrencies? Well, the main difference is that it's what's called a stable coin. It's a cryptocurrency made for transactions, not as a vehicle for investment. Bitcoin, which is the most famous cryptocurrency, nobody actually uses Bitcoin to buy anything because the value of Bitcoin might be 20% higher by the time the transaction is processed. Mm. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. So Facebook's new coin, Libra, is tied to a basket of currencies so that its value is always the same. It is a currency not for speculative investment. It is a currency for transactions. Why do you think it is, Nick, that Facebook's entering this space, whereas other major tech companies really haven't done this before? Well, that's a complicated, hard question. OK, so why is Facebook doing this? Facebook has a couple of motivations. Number one, they would like people to spend money on Facebook. And if they can create a coin that people use for transactions, it'll make people use Facebook more to buy things, to remit payments, right? They control a lot of the tech infrastructure in the developing world, a lot of money getting sent back and forth. There are a lot of reasons for Facebook to want to make that more efficient and to make it happen on their platform. So that is reason number one. Reason number two, Facebook would like to be an exciting and cool place to work for developers. And Facebook's reputation has kind of taken a hit the last few years. So having a cool, exciting crypto blockchain project is a really good way to bring people in and make people excited. And three, a top Facebook executive, David Marcus, had the idea for this. He took it to Zuckerberg. You know, maybe somebody at some point took a crypto idea to Jeff Bezos and he was like, nah, too much to do today. For whatever reason, Zuckerberg latched onto this and put 100 people on it. And here we are. So you were talking sort of about the other issues Facebook has had. I, I want to talk to you about that. You know, with Facebook's record on privacy, can you really trust this company with your money? <laughs> yeah, so that's the that is what could bring this thing down. So Facebook has tried to engineer Libra in a way that you don't have to trust Facebook. And they say, look, it's set up with a whole bunch of different nodes that are controlled by different companies. It's all open source. We're not going to take the data from your transactions and use it in our ad targeting. So they've tried to kind of tie their hands behind the back so that you know they're not going to use your transactions with the coin to violate your privacy or to target you in creepy ways. Do that, we, said, yeah. the crypto, that said, the cryptocurrency community doesn't trust Facebook one lick. Mm. Nobody trusts Facebook one lick. If this gets known not as Libra, but as Facecoin, the whole thing is toast. <laughs> Facecoin, yeah, that, that seems to be the term going around. I'm just curious, though, Nick, is somebody going to regulate this? Do you foresee any regulatory issues at this point? Oh, yeah, there are a million regulatory issues, right? I mean, who the heck knows how any cryptocurrency is going to be regulated right now? We are still waiting for firm guidance from the SEC. So this will definitely be regulated at some point, but Facebook doesn't know for sure how it will be regulated, so they have to kind of operate in an environment of uncertainty. I don't know, Nick. I, it just the story makes me go, hmm, so many unanswered questions <laughs> still. There are a lot. Yeah. yeah. I want to thank you so much, Nick Thompson, for joining us on this. Thank you so much.